Well, I think they're going to have to start with that offensive content. If you look at what's happening around the world right now, Facebook is under siege. Australia, the UK, the European Union, even Canada now all coming out and saying they want to place additional restrictions on these social networking companies to make sure that they are managing what users are sharing. So I think Facebook is going to need to show some progress there in a hurry. Mike, I'm not sure that this is all bad. I'm, I'm as big a free speech advocate as I guess you're likely to find, but I'm not sure this is entirely just about free speech. Just looking at what the UK uh, is considering with this white paper that's out, isn't this more about having these platforms responsible for the type of content that's on their platforms, whether people are allowed to say it or not, and the impact of that on users, responding to complaints in a timely manner and having some kind of uh, consequence if they don't. I think it is about that, but it's a very complicated problem because there's cultural norms associated with this. The uh, United States is about free speech, and so the guidelines or the accepted behavior uh, in the United States is going to be very different from that in Europe. And so I think that uh, while some of this is about business practices and decency, it also touches upon the law and what is the Constitution of the United States. And so I think it's fundamentally very, very difficult to have global norms around this. And while, of course, things can improve, it's very difficult to define that specific line as opposed to issues like privacy that are probably a little more clear and we could all agree that we want the privacy that we want. Casey, in terms of, the, you know, coming up with those definitions, I mean, Julia just reported that Facebook's considering limiting live streaming. Who can do it? I mean, where could some of these lines be drawn in the U.S.? I guess, how is Silicon Valley thinking about this and the conversations that are taking place, for example, in boardrooms? Sure. So, I mean, when it comes to something like live streaming, there are restrictions that you could place on that activity that I think would still allow for a lot of free speech. For example, if somebody had created a new account, maybe you would make them wait a few days before you did a live stream. Or maybe you would say, you know, you need to have at least this many followers in order to live stream, sort of prove that you've been a good citizen on the platform before you can do it. So I think for some of these creative tools, we're going to have to start treating them more as privileges than as rights. Yeah, somehow, Casey, it, it seems like we've maybe gotten to the space where certain online tools we're starting to think of as human rights, like, like live streaming and whatnot and, and trolling uh, practically. I mean, e even when I got into this white paper that has a lot of people up in arms because it's talking about regulating certain kinds of speech, we do that in the U.S. on TV networks and, uh, and elsewhere. There are ratings. There are uh, norms around what types of content uh, is put in front of people. Is this really that far afield of that kind of regulation? Well, I think it depends on what the final proposals look like. But I've got to tell you, when I read this white paper yesterday, there were things in there that concerned me. The white paper says that uh, the UK may want to regulate trolling. Uh, one person's trolling is another person's good faith discussion. So I think a lot of the, the questions are around where, how is the UK going to define some of these terms and how are they going to implement regulations that can actually be enforced in a way that just doesn't lead to a, a lot of censorship and a much less free internet.